After making stylized shaders for several years, I've developed quite a few shading techniques that can take your shaders from looking like this to this in minutes. So today, I'm going to teach you my top three tips for making stylized shaders in Blender. But first, welcome to the Comfy Mug channel. My name is Christian, and I spend countless hours learning how to make anime stuff in Blender so that you don't have to. So make sure to like the video and subscribe with notifications enabled so you don't miss out. And without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Now, to demonstrate the tips I'm about to show you, I have a default cube with a basic, unshaded, and uncolored texture. And if you want to use the same file I'm working with, the original texture and finished product will be available for my Magic and Elder Mug members over on Patreon. So check out the link in the description if you want a more detailed look at this project. Now, for the first technique, we'll be using a method I call the Real Fake Shadow Mix, which is super useful for anything from tall structures to smaller objects. To make it, we'll just need to add this simple node setup and mix our gradient and basic texture with a darkened mix color whose factor we'll set to 0.9. We'll then add another mix color, which will stay as a mix, and plug the result of our darken into the factor. This will allow us to integrate our fake shadow with our texture through the color. And if you want to go a step further, you can add a lighten mix right after with a factor of 0.2 to get a light upper fade as well. As for our diffuse BSDF, we'll add another mix color set to multiply with a factor anywhere between 0.4 and 0.8. Stylized shadows are never fully realistic, so adjusting the factor of the darken and multiply can give you a greater control over the look of your shader. And as a bonus, you can add a few more nodes to your diffuse, mixing the normal and object outputs to shift the way shadows interact with your shader. But for our next tip, we'll get to add some highlighted edges to our model, which is a technique used in pretty much any anime or piece of stylized art you'll find on the internet. And I actually got this idea from a tutorial by Tadayoshi CG. So I'll link his original video in the description if you want to see it. But to add this effect to your shader, we'll need to do one thing in the Geometry Nodes tab. So after adding an Edge Angle node, we'll connect the unassigned angle widget to the group output. We'll then want to go to our Modifiers tab, and under the Geometry Node Modifier, we'll open the Output Attribute menu and type Edge in this little box. And now, if we add a Bevel Modifier with 0.02 feet as the amount, or 0.006 meters if you're using the metric system for your units, and change the segments to 3, we can go back into our Shader Editor and add an Attribute Node and a Color Ramp. We'll then crank the color stops a bit, type edge into the little attribute box, and just like that, we have highlighted edges. But by adding a color ramp, noise, and darken mix, we can break the edges up a bit, and then mix this effect into our shader by plugging it into the factor of a new mix color node, which will allow us to change the color of our edges to whatever we want. I use this specific technique for everything, including the custom-built stylized assets my patrons get to download at the start of each month. My patrons are the number one reason why I can make these tutorials here on YouTube. And if you would like to support me and get anime assets like these and more in return, all you need to do is click the link in the description and become a Comfy Mug patron. I really appreciate your support, and I want to say a huge thank you to all of my patrons, especially the Elder Mug members. Stay comfy, my friends. You guys are amazing. Now, let me show you the final tip I use to integrate all my different shaders into the same scene. And it's as easy as adding a color ramp with its stops reversed, a glossy BSDF, and a shader to RGB. And after we connect the basic texture to the color ramp, and turn the black stop to a lighter gray, we can connect the color of our shader to RGB to a new mix color set to overlay with a factor anywhere between 0.1 and 0.4. This technique allows the shader to accept environmental lighting while still keeping the stylized look of the texture. You can then add an outline and maybe a little bit of displacement but the number one way of tying all of these techniques together is by applying the Kuahara filter to your viewport. And if you want to learn how to do that, I made a video about it, and you can click on it right now. 